Moderna had their investor day today. This is actually my first time covering Moderna. MRNA is the ticker. If you enjoy educational investment videos, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. My name is Daniel. Let's dive into understanding how you would, you know, start to peel apart the, the onion here to understand this business. And so let's look at Moderna because this investor day didn't exactly have investors enthused. The stock opened down significantly between 13, 15%, depending on the minute. Look, zooming out a bit, you see the stock has been on an absolutely wild ride. At one point during the peak of the pandemic, it was up what looks to be like 2,400% from its IPO. Subsequently, however, in just the last three years, it's lost over 85% of its market value. So clearly a painful ride for a lot of investors. And so the question is, you know, is, is the bottom near and, you know, where does this go from here? Well, I think it's important to first look at the financials because oftentimes with the stock price, unless it's all 100% hype, uh, it usually ties to the fundamentals. And I think you see that here when you're looking at the fundamentals, you can see revenue, you know, that is the key aspect of this business, you know, what's driving it. This is a key tell, you know, are you winning market share? Are you creating value? Revenue went in response to COVID, it went from negligible 60 million in 2019 to 1200% growth, 800 million. Then the next year, another 2200% growth uh, to around 18 billion. So you see it, it sort of capped out around 18, 19 billion per year. At that point, they were generating tons of profit, 10 billion plus in profit uh, in 2021. And then subsequently, you see the business has absolutely collapsed. And so this ties to the stock chart where you see revenues plummeted 65%, going from massive profitability for years ago of $13 billion to sizable burn, sizable loss of $2 billion and continued expect, uh, expected uh, collapse in terms of sales this year with another 50% decline. This is Wall Street expectations. You can see all analyst expectations at AI ticker chat is free. And then you can see in the next year, they are expecting some sort of recovery in this business, but margins, you know, are, are still, you know, compressed. You still see, you know, an unprofitable business. So not surprising to see the stock absolutely demolished as you can see revenues have taken revenues and profitability have taken you know a similar journey now this is I, I imagine it's largely tied to covid so i'm curious you know how much revenue came from non-covid vaccines i'm not really familiar with moderna's story so i go to ai ticker chat chat is now completely free to use this doesn't include some of our premium features but chat is free to use so asking this question to ai it gives me the answer and that a hundred percent of their revenue came from the, the COVID related vaccines, 0% from non COVID vaccines. So it's saying it was its only commercial product authorized for use throughout 2023. So that does show you why it's been on this volatile ride. That's also a super important lesson for investors. When I think about my own personal investment journey, one of the key criteria I think about is blow up risk. Now, different investors have different degrees of sensitivity to that type of blow up risk. You know, for example, uh, the last two weeks I called out to my subscribers, a company that's arguably quite sensitive to potential changes in the app store and the risks, you know, that could could happen to it. It's growing very quickly. You know, it's trading at cheap multiple founder led. So it has all the other aspects that I'm looking for, you know, on my checklist. It strikes me as obvious potential. But the the challenge is that you have you you have to watch out for blow up risks, and one of those key blow up risks is either supplier concentration or customer concentration or product concentration. So if you look at just different ways you can kill a business, and I think with Moderna you had that challenge where you know when you have 100% of your revenue tied to primarily one type of product, you are more sensitive to the changes and, and fluctuation. I much prefer the sort of diversified business where you have tons of different, you know, customers, products, uh, and it's it's effectively more resilient, more of a robust business model. And so this, I'd argue, part of the reason why the stock is down so much is because it was such sort of a fragile position with 100% coming from COVID. That said, they are working on fleshing out their pipeline. And you can see that they have been building their respiratory vaccine portfolio, including flu, RSV, and some hybrid 
type of treatments that include flu plus COVID and next gen COVID. So they do have various different respiratory vaccines that are going to be coming to market in addition to COVID. The challenge is that there is some, you know, competition here. So margins are inherently going to be lower. Uh, they what I'm more interested in, frankly, is where they say limited to no competition. That speaks to me as an investor. It says, hey, more profitability. And so looking at these other virus vaccines, CMV, I had to look this up once again using AI ticker chat. That's cytomegalovirus. That's, uh, I believe, a member of the herpes family, and it leads to birth defects. And then there's the norovirus, which is, uh, I, I think someone recently commented on my Celsius video, which in full disclosure, I own a you know, a small stake. It's sort of a speculative position. Someone, someone said, uh, I don't drink Celsius because it gives me the squirts. Uh, that was I, vernacular. I, I've never heard that before. It cracked me up. Um, but yeah, so norovirus isn't the squirts, but close to it with diarrhea. Um, so uh, un unpleasant either way. Uh, for all those folks that are regulars, just imagine all the joyful things we get to talk about today. You know, this is, I'm sure, not what you were expecting uh, to be tuning into Unrivaled. But hey, you know, we, 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 we're this is an educational channel. We're constantly learning. Uh, and so looking at this portfolio, yes, there's a lot more here. And, you know, it's interesting to see these other viruses uh, or other vaccines. You know, you're talking about maybe, you know, looking at this, maybe $10 billion combined addressable market. So let's say five to $10 billion and potentially very, very high margin. So that could be a boon to the stock if that actually comes to market. In the years ahead, you do see that they have some other rare diseases and oncology products that, you know, they're exploring as well. And so, you know, what is management saying about their trajectory? They're saying, look, look at our commercial respiratory franchise. So going back to the COVID, the RSV, the flu, they think that's actually profitable in 2024, despite the sizable losses of the total business. So what's the difference? We'll talk about that in a second. But they do invest in late stage pipeline to drive organic sales. So they are investing in their portfolio of other products to get to growth because that's where they need to be. And they expect break even operating cash uh, so they're expecting break even around six billion in revenue. That means maybe the business needs to double or get back to where it previously was. But they're expecting this to achieve this in 2028. That is a little bit disappointing. Investor, no investor likes to sit for years and say, hey, I'm going to be sort of twiddling my thumbs waiting for you to be profitable. I mean, if if we're going to be waiting for that, you're going to say, hey, I want hyper growth. And you're not even saying, hey, we're going to get to hyper growth. You're saying, oh, yeah, by 2028, maybe they're trying to under promise over deliver. But this is I, I would guess this is why the stock, you know, came lower. This is, you know, keep in mind, this is my first time looking at Moderna. And, you know, they're saying, look, don't worry about the cash burn. Don't worry about the investments in this pipeline. We're not expecting to raise more equity. You know, your stake in the pie isn't going to get diluted. We have plenty of cash on the balance sheet. And that looks to be the case. OK, so what are my thoughts, you know, as as I look at Moderna stock, mRNA is the ticker. First of all, this is not financial advice. Also, quick plug, just earlier this week, James, a premium member of the exclusive Unrivaled Investing community, shared, this is a direct quote, was very happy to have re-upped my annual subscription, enjoying the contributions and wisdom of the Unrivaled community. If you're looking for compelling ideas, come check out Unrivaled Investing. By the way, I do expect to be raising prices soon. So now is the time to lock it in. Each year, I expect to be raising the price of the subscription. So if you subscribe now, you're grandfathered in at the favorable rates. So looking at Moderna, take a step back. They were established with the goal of using mRNA, an information molecule to treat and prevent disease. And it looks like, you know, they're heading in the right direction, going from 2020, where they had 25 plans, uh, 25 programs under development. Now, 2024, just a few years later, uh, it's now at 43. And you can see the different stages that they're in going from heavily preclinical to now phase two and phase three. And they've done this in fairly short order. And they're saying, look, because of our mRNA, our mRNA focused platform, we also have a better hit ratio in terms of uh, getting these products to market or getting approval. Um, this might be based on a very small sample size, given that COVID's their only vaccine, I believe, that at least last year was in market. So I, I would take it with a grain of salt. But they are saying, look, relative to industry standards, at least for phase one, phase two, we're certainly well above. So you're, we're doing something right here in terms of potentially 
being able to prove out that their products can work. Um, you know, it's an interesting data point. And I, I think investors are waiting to see, you know, when these new products come to market and also the uncertainty of what's this portfolio worth of products that haven't come to market. That is a big aspect of this. And you look at the valuation, you look at the business where they say, look, our commercial respiratory portfolio, this sub portfolio, not the whole portfolio, but this sub part of this portfolio, they're saying this year it's doing around three to three and a half billion dollars. So that's all their revenue. And they're expecting, look, this could grow with new program launches. And by the way, they do think it could be around, you know, a billion dollars in operating profit. Given their recent losses, I would presume that that's roughly translate in, translates into their earnings. Uh, so different types of investors might look at this and come to different conclusions. Uh, this one billion, let, let, let's round up and say $1 billion tied to respiratory portfolio. Because currently you can see, you know, the wild ride it's been on at one point, you know, was looks like around a $200 billion market cap. Now it's closer to a $26 billion market cap stocks price around 60, I think eight sixty nine dollars a share. And so, you know, $26 billion versus that going back to this, this $1 billion. So just think of it. If you were to say, hey, this $1 billion port $1 billion profit from respiratory, what's a fair multiple for that, for what you think could be stable over time? And if you were to say, hey, this, you know, should be a market type of multiple for a billion dollars, then you'd say, hey, that sub segment of the portfolio is $20 billion versus the market cap of 26. So really, the market is currently only assigning around six billion dollars to their portfolio and and really saying, hey, we're not going to get diluted. And this is this is what's going to create the value over time for shareholders. And so I think this is the potential for Moderna to bottom is if you have, you know, a, investors increasingly believe, hey, this portfolio of products, this could be worth a lot more than $6 billion. Maybe this is worth, you know, comparable to their existing respiratory portfolio. And that's, let's add another $20 billion. Or maybe, you know, you get to these, you know, these, these vaccines, two of which have limited competition, and you're generating, let's say $5 billion, potentially in profit a year. And then you're talking about, well, wait a second, $5 billion potentially dollars in profit. Maybe I'm, I'm being way too, uh, you know, aggressive saying $5 billion, but let's, let's go back to this market cap, you know, $5 billion. If that other portfolio, you know, fleshes out and improves itself, then you'd say, well, wait a second, 5 billion just from that no vaccine portfolio, then you could obviously get a much higher price versus the 26 billion. You know, that would, that sub segment would say 5 billion, you know, it would be a five times multiple and then you'd get respiratory for free. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at this. So I, I personally put this probably in the too hard pile for me. I'd rather, you know, find those things where you have the product diversification and they're heading in that direction. Uh, you know, and so I, I, it's probably too hard for me at my, at, at this point in my own personal investment journey, I just prefer easier setups where I, I truthfully, I prefer the rinse and repeat type of model where it's like, okay, uh, we we we've sold into this market and we, we now expect to sell into this market and, you know, we're taking the same product or, uh, you know, it's, it's about, Hey, we, we, already have these five products in market and it's pretty well diversified and we have six, seven, eight queued up and we're very confident that it'll do quite well. So that I personally, you know, that would be an easier story for me, but I look at this or, or, Hey, we sell this product and yes, there's competition, but here's our track record of taking share over time. And this is why we're going to keep taking share. You know, we, we have what, what it takes to beat out the competitors. We have something special. And so would not be surprised if Moderna stock ends up much higher from here. I'm just not sure it's, it's going to be part of my investment journey. If you're a mega bull or bear, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching Unrivaled Investing.